How are we doing? Uh, oh, I'm loving this. I'm absolutely loving this. It's so wonderful to see you all at the second annual Creator Economy Expo. Welcome to Cleveland, and how's the weather? Right? We, we cooked this up special for you. Um, just so you know, I know it's what, like 41 and raining right now? Tomorrow it could be 80 degrees and sunny. It absolutely could be. It might be 22 and snowing as well, but... So thank you for being here. This is my hometown. Welcome. How many first-timers to Cleveland, Ohio? Raise your hand. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. One of my missions is to get more people to Cleveland, so thank you. I appreciate you coming. Really, really like this. So we have a lot of different types of people here. We have some corporate marketers. We have some agency folks. We have some software people. But most of you are content entrepreneurs, content creators. And what I was going to do this morning was have you like introduce each other, you know, like, talk a little bit, but I'm like, I won't do that because you're probably, you're, some of you are introverts, you don't want to go there, that's fine, we won't do it. But what I loved about this event last year were the partnerships that came from it. And a lot of you from last year are working together, you're doing amazing things together. So I want to make sure that when you get breaks, if you see somebody that's by themselves, uh, that you should go over to talk to them, and you have permission to ask them why they are here. Why are you here? What do you want to get out of this? So have those conversations, and I think if you do that and you're a little bit open to those types of things, by the end of this, you will get a lot more out of this event. Cool? With me? Thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a take on the creator economy about what I don't like. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of a rant, and then I'm gonna talk about some good stuff. So let's start here. Also known as the influencer economy, right away, you lost me. I don't like that. We'll talk about that in a second. Software facilitated economy that allows creators and influence to earn revenue from their creations, okay? Oh, and then let's talk about all these platforms. Let's talk about YouTube and Instagram, and Facebook and Twitch and on and on and on, right? Do you see how quickly they passed over the content creator portion of this? First of all, oh, let's mention influencers, then let's pass right over the creators and let's go right to these platforms that are making billions and billions of dollars off of us, okay? It's fine, it's okay. Let's go on to something else, let's look at this. Thank you, Goldman Sachs, for giving us a completely ridiculous number that I could do nothing with. <laughs> I don't really know what the mathematical formula was for coming up with this, but it is irrelevant for everyone here. I don't have any desire for this. No, it's fine. I like the attention. I want people talking about creator economy. That's fine. But these things don't help us, and it's not about what you're trying to accomplish as entrepreneurs. All right, let's talk about this. Some of you went to this event. This was uh, earlier, like think last week. Creator Economy Summit, great. I love when, when other organizations are trying to lift us up and, and do something special and get creators together. Wonderful, let's look at this. They got this lineup, and I look at this lineup, and I'm immediately unhappy with this lineup. No, no, no. Hank Green, love Hank Green. Absolutely love Hank Green. What he did with the Vlogbrothers, and, VidCon and everything, fantastic. But you know what I see here? I see VC, platform, influencer, agency, VC, platform, what? So we're getting together, talking about creator economy, but we really don't have any creators talking about why we're doing what we're doing and what's important. One more. There are 207 million content creators in the world according to Linktree. I think that includes my mom, <laughs> who's happily posting things on Facebook that I don't want to look at. This is not helpful. Is, are there millions? Yes. Is it probably the fastest growing business on the planet? Probably yes. Is this helpful for us? Probably not. So let's, let's I want to give you my take on when I see creator economy, what comes to mind and what the things that I look at. It's built first off of entrepreneurs starting businesses, first and foremost. 
So I want to make sure we talk about that. So this is a business that we're getting into. What are we doing? We're building and then monetizing audiences. And how do we do that? We deliver amazing content experiences to them on a regular basis. This is it. And this is what almost all of you are trying to do. And we're trying to get better at making meaningful experiences for the audiences that we're reaching. And you know I've already used this term, content entrepreneurs. There's a lot of terms out there, right? We've heard content creators, creators in general, that's a whole different sort of thing, and I'll break that up in a little bit. But I like content entrepreneurs because this is a content first business. This is what we're trying to do. There are a kajillion content creators out there. But what separates a content creator from a content entrepreneur is you're trying to make a living from this. This is a business first operation. So I'm going to talk about this idea of content entrepreneurs as we go. So my job, this just released this morning. This is our third annual research on the creator economy. We have some wonderful partners. Thank you very much. Some wonderful partners that came together to put this thing. I think we're really doing something special because we're looking at the creator economy from a content entrepreneur focus first and foremost. And it's not that I don't love software companies and I don't love VCs and I don't love what, what all these organizations are doing. They're, they're doing amazing things. But it's you who are the core and if we don't get better at what we do, none of this other stuff matters. So I'm gonna break this down a little bit with this research, and there's lots of, when you say creators, there's lots of different creators out there. So the, when we, we sort of broke them up, we got over a thousand uh, content entrepreneurs to fill this and complete this survey. The, one, the first part are maker creators, like who are those? And we separate those out, and those are artists and musicians and a lot of people that ser sell their wares on Etsy and, and those types of things. We're not considering those, that's not a content first business model, we're pushing that to the side. It's not who we're talking about. If we look at the middle of influencers, you might say, can a content creator, content entrepreneur be an influencer? Absolutely. But if you're just looking solely at an influencer model, they don't need the process that you have from consistently creating content, focusing on one or two channels, delivering these amazing content experiences. They leverage, leverage generally their popularity more than anything. So they're, they're famous on something and they're using that influence. We sort of push that to the side. And we're focusing on this area called expert creators. So you have some kind of insight into some area, some knowledge area, and you're gonna share that knowledge area with your particular tilt on a regular basis. Build that audience and monetize that audience. So that's the thousand plus that got through all the questions so that we could remove the maker creators and the influencers out. That's what we have left with the data that I'm gonna share with you this morning. Now, I'm very excited to share with you the business side stats, very important, but over and over as I went through this data, it hit me that a content creator that is trying to do this full time and create a business, they're not doing it for business reasons. They're doing it for life reasons. So most of you have done what you're doing because you want to live a better life. And that's what I love about this more than anything else. So as we went through the why, why did you decide to leave your job, to get out of school and do this thing called content entrepreneurship, it all came down to these things. Number one, number one reason, I want to enjoy my life. Do you want to enjoy your life? Yes, right? So as this is a business conference, but this is also about we're all looking for happiness, so I love this idea. Number two, you want to be independent. You don't want to, <laughs> I've talked to many of you, you don't want to report to anyone. <laughs> and nobody wants this the other way around either. So you want to be independent. You want to work when you want to work. You don't want anybody telling you when you're going to work. I love this one. And Jay will talk, Jay Kunzo will talk about this later, about creating something meaningful, about resonance. I, I absolutely love this one. If we're going to live and if we're going to be happy, and if we're going to do this content entrepreneurship thing, let's create something that makes an impact on the world in a positive way. I love that. And the last one was, I want to live where I want to work when I want. I don't want to live where I want. It's kind of bossy as you think about this. 
It's like if you were putting a job description together and you had to go work for somebody, it's like, I want to, first and foremost, I'll work for you, but I want to enjoy my life. Then I want to be independent. I want to report to anybody else. I want to work when I want, where I want, and if I do, I want it to be meaningful. Then you can hire me. <laughs> so that is you. And that's me as well. So I'm very selfish when it comes to these things. So this is what I love about what we're doing right now. So that's the whole thing. And then you might say, Joe, this is a really hard thing to do. Content creator, content entrepreneur, it's not an easy business model. It is not. So you say, oh, could, do people regret their decision? No, only 2%. And I've called these people up and I've talked to them. <laughs> so only 2% regret. I'm like, 2%, that seems high. No, it's not, very, very low. How, how would you get that any other way? And I wanna bust some myths this morning because a lot of us and a lot of people in the media, when you talk about influencer marketing, they're like, we need large audiences to make this thing work. We need thousands and millions and whatever. What we found out was that the average content entrepreneur who's doing this full time has an audience of just 4,000. Some people are making a really good living and they only have a couple hundred people in their core audience. You're like, how do they make that happen? Well, it's possible to do that. They're using four unique channels. They're not spreading content everywhere and they're monetizing through about two channels. So it's interesting to see this as we go. We asked, how much money do you expect to make in 2023? I think this is good. I think it could be better, but I think it's pretty good. We're, we're, we're doing some good things to say, okay, 108,000 gross revenue, 62,000 in profit, that's a healthy 60% margin, I like that. Startup expenses are around 10 grand, and it's about one to two grand a year to keep this thing going. So if you look at what it costs to get a small business off the ground, this is very, very reasonable. So I like this, I like these numbers. And you're not creating content all the time. 46% of the time, half the less than half the time, 17 hours a week, you're creating content. Everything else is content discovery, I've got marketing stuff, I've got sales stuff, I've got operational stuff, it's about the business and how we're gonna make this thing work as a business. Biggest three challenges, growing audience. Number two, how does my content get found? Content discovery. And number three, making money. And it's like we knew something because if you look at most of the sessions for the next two days, most of them are in these first three because this is where your challenges are. And we were trying to meet those challenges as we go. I love this chart because when the media talks about the creator economy, I don't think they really, they talk about brand deals and big sponsorships, and I don't think they realize how most of us make money and make our revenue. Number one, and number one most profitable, coaching and consulting. Two, books. Number three, online courses and workshops. And then if you go down most profitable, you've got advertising, sponsored content, and five, paid membership and community. So I love this because we started doing this last year, and I really think we're trying to bust some myths around that as well and say, this, this is the business model. Yes, you can be a content-first business and also have a consultancy. That's totally fine, and actually, most of us are doing that. So it's interesting to see how this is going. And probably my favorite chart, this is the third year, we're sort of evolving this chart as we go, but we're trying to get out there and tell a new content creator who wants to be a content entrepreneur, what should I expect? What does my runway need to be. So from launch, takes about five months to first dollar. And then we say, okay, well, our revenue exceeds exp expenses at about the 12 month mark. You're seeing between 12 and 13 months, I can switch from a hobby or from a side hustle, which I hate that term, but side hustle, to a full-time gig. And then 18 months, and this is the third year in a row, it's been about 18 months where I can support myself and I can maybe get to a point where I'm supporting my family. That is not bad. That is not bad at all. I mean, small businesses generally take, in general, across everything that we're looking at, generally take about three years. So, and then it's hockey stick growth, because once you build that minimum viable audience, then you really see change happen. I wanted to talk about this person. Anybody know this person? Jimmy Donaldson. So, this is Mr. Beast, and for all the people that don't like Jimmy and what Jimmy's done, what I love about it is he has followed this model of content entrepreneurship to a T. 2012 started, focused on 
one platform, YouTube. How do I really get to know this better platform better than anyone else? It took three years just to find a consistent topic. Of course he's not growing because he's all over the place, but finally found a consistent topic. 2016, a lot of people don't realize this, only 30,000 subs. So not a lot for what Mr. Beast is, which is now over 100, I think over 150 million now. 11 years, folks. This is a long-term initiative. And so congratulations to Jimmy and what he's been able to do. But this is the type of thing, and this is what I want to tell you, is that if you want to do this and you want to be successful, you need to be patient. It's okay. It's okay. We've got to set, up, we've got to set this up so that we are. So these are the five keys as I round this out. Number one, we know that as soon as you possibly can as a content entrepreneur, you've got to make a dollar. You've got, to, you've got to get the confidence that this is something you can do. So we've got to get fast the first dollar. Two, plan your budget and your runway. Get your expenses down. When my wife and I started what ultimately became Content Marketing Institute, we called them the bologna and ramen noodle years because we've got to keep those expenses low so we can get through those times when we're not driving that revenue yet. Focus on a niche audience. And Jesse Cole, at the end of the day, will talk a lot about this. How do you differentiate? How can we stand out in a sea of content? One core platform. You don't have to be on every platform. Focus on one, own one, and then we want to be diverse in our monetization. We're going to make money lots of different ways. Just like if you look at your financial portfolio, you don't want to have everything in one stock. You want to be diversified. All right, so that's the research. It's live right now. The tilt.com slash research. Thank you to the partners that have put this together. Really, really appreciate all their support. Thank you. And share it like crazy, and you'll love this. There's no like registration. You can just download it and share it and take it offline and print it and do whatever you want with it. You don't have to, so we like that. Now, I like the lead part of it, but no, it's okay. We, it's, it's out there free for you to share. Okay, so now. Creator Expo is your hashtag. Share all day today. Everything is there. Please take pictures. It's all good. We want you to do that. I'm, you know, this wouldn't be possible without you being here. A lot of you went through a lot of travel heck to get here. I appreciate that you, you went through that. Um, I love this audience. I love you. Uh, it's, and I've, I've done events for more than 15 years now. I'm dating myself. But this is by far my favorite audience. So I, because probably because you're just like me. And, and that resonates with me. So thank you so much. A lot of conference organizers say, we couldn't do this without the sponsors, but this absolutely is true. We could not do this without our sponsors, especially our presenting sponsor, Lulu. Thank you so much for all your support and everything that we do at the Tilt and CEX and our gold sponsor, Spreadshop. Make sure you get the t-shirts. Those are all free. Make sure you take one before you leave.